the enemy commits attacks on the most valuable. Apart from residential buildings, the heritage, culture, and architecture is being destroyed. The most known damage that was caused was to the Donetsk Theater of Drama in Mariupol. It is considered to be the oldest in the whole left bank of Ukraine, but this hasn't stopped the occupiers. These occupiers weren't stopped even by the hundreds of people who were hiding under the theater building waiting for evacuation. This is the image from a satellite. It is clearly visible. There was a sign stating kids on the square ground. Regardless of this, a superpowered bomb was aimed at the theater. The theater was built at the beginning of the 1960s. It is well known not only in Ukraine, but also abroad. Plenty of plays by classic and modern writers have been staged here. World-recognized celebrities have performed on this stage as well. One of them is actress Ada Rohotsuba. As a result of the bombing, more than 300 civilians died. The middle part of the building is completely destroyed. And here is the museum in Ivankovo, the Kyiv region. Several artworks by popular Ukrainian painteress Maria Primachenko were exposed here. Primachenko's paintings have been shown not only in Ukraine, but also in Warsaw, Sofia, Montreal, Prague, and Paris. The legend says that when Pablo Picasso saw her works, he called her genius. Picasso also added that if they had the artist of her level, she would become famous all over the world. The artist had her own unique style. At the base of it were Ukrainian fairy tales and legends. She drew charming and non-existing animals, flowers, and everyday life in a village. When you look at her paintings, you realize that she brilliantly possessed the skill of painting the lines, and she had this feeling of the realism in all the details and in locating the parts of what she painted. There were dozens of her works in the museum, but the building was completely destroyed by the fire. People say the local inhabitants managed to save her art pieces. However, no one knows where they are now. The village where the museum is located was only recently liberated from the occupier's forces a few days ago. The fate of over 2,000 art pieces from the Museum of Arkip Quinci in Mariupol remains unknown. This is the artist's hometown. It is difficult to recognize a museum building in these wrecks, but here is exactly where the artist's paintings were shown, along with the paintings of other famous Ukrainian artists, such as Haleshenko, Yablanska, and Iva Sovsky. This is Kharkiv and its legendary house, The Word. Over a year ago, it was rewarded as a monument of national significance. Famous Ukrainian writer Mykola Khvilevy, who is the author of the famous slogan Away from Moscow Forward to Europe, used to live here. This, at first unnoticeable building, in the shape of the letter C, was built at the end of the 1920s. Plenty of famous writers lived here under one roof, and they were monitored. Later on, they became victims of the Red Terror. Tetiana shows exclusively, for the facts of the week, what terror this building is experiencing now. The building survives the Second World War undamaged. During the current Russian war against Ukraine, as you can see, it got damaged. But that's fine, we'll restore it. But that's not the only one. There are plenty that need to be restored. How much cultural and architectural heritage have been destroyed since the beginning of the full-scale war? The Minister of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine provides the actual number of cases in the course of an exclusive interview for the facts of the week. He states that the occupiers aren't ashamed of demolishing neither museums nor churches. 135 cases have been registered and verified. By the way, most of them are religious buildings belonging both to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate, as well as synagogues and mosques. To save the historical and cultural heritage from being destroyed, volunteers have joined the battle. Hundreds of objects need to be protected. Objects of cultural heritage and the museum collections are being transferred to safe areas. Lviv has an uncountable number of pieces of heritage, so that's why a special plan to protect it was designed. Aww. This is how the stained glass windows are going to be protected, for example. They are covered by sandwich panels composed of two metal layers and foam in between. As a result, the material is quite resilient and durable. The base reliefs are being removed. 
The statues and the museum collections are being hidden. The same goes for open-air monuments. This is what the statue of Taras Shevchenko in Kharkiv looks like now. And this is the monument to Duke in Odessa. And now we're in Kyiv, monitoring the monument strengthening. Horoshevsky will withstand. There is a foundation under the statue of this political and civil figure. That's why it's possible to place sandbags around it, although they are pretty heavy. The monument to Bodan Kalebsky was shielded using another way. The scaffoldings have been constructed around the statue, and the wood material placed over. Unfortunately, it can't endure more weight. To protect our cultural heritage, there is a need to find a unique and capable method for each monument. And those methods were researched by architects along with restorers. This can protect from small splinters, blasts in close proximity, and bullets. 150 tons of sand were used to strengthen this trio monument. Industrial alpinists were also joining the process. We also get help from responsible businesses. For example, we ran into a problem with the lack of sacks and my friend provided 10,000 sacks. During the Second World War, these monuments used to be buried under the ground, although that time, fewer monuments were destroyed than now. There will be a need for hundreds of millions of dollars to restore everything. This is the calculation by the Ministry of Culture, but the possibility to do that is real. Let's take Warsaw as an example. The old town of the Polish capital has been renovated by only using images and pictures. The Italian government offered to assist the restoration of the theater in Mariupol. Everything else will also be rebuilt, because Europe stands with us. The whole world stands with us. Oleski Kobzar for the Facts of the Week program, ICTV Channel, United News.